Hi, I'm Mario with Utmost Performance. Have you ever heard of a game called Laden Thinks? Chances are you probably haven't unless you know a little bit about poker. The game Laden Thinks was one that was invented when these guys were in the middle of a tournament and somehow they got bored and so they invented this game. And the guy Laden, that's his last name, he invented this game. That's why it's called Laden Thinks. And here's how the game goes. He asked two guys if they wanted to participate in this game. And then Laden threw out a question. And then these two guys had to figure out the answer to that question. Now, it, was a numer it has a numerical answer. So the closest one would win and they would wager money. They would do like a side bet type of thing where they would be playing their poker here, but then they would also be playing this game on the side while they're playing poker. How they do that, I have no idea. And so this game was super interesting. They would just ask a random question. For example, uh, what's the distance between the Earth and Saturn? Now, the interesting thing is the, the person asking the question doesn't know the right answer more often. I mean, do you know the distance from Earth to Saturn? Neither do I. But he asks that question and then he throws it out to these two guys to come up with the answer. And so these two guys begin guessing and one guy guesses first and then the other guy can either go above that answer or he can go below that answer. And then they ultimately get to the point where if you're satisfied with your answer, you just call. You just say, I'm done. That's my answer. You go to the other guy. He's done once he locks in his answer. And then the person that asked the question in the first place, he says, all right, here's the answer. This is the distance between Earth and Saturn. And you win the money or you lose. But it's not necessarily the answer. You may go look it up on Wikipedia and, and it's not the answer. So what makes this game so interesting and why am I bringing this to our attention so that we can use it in our own lives? Because the game isn't about having the right answer. The game isn't about confirming what Wikipedia has said. Here's what the game is about. You've got to understand the person who is asking the question. You see, you've got to get into the mind of the person asking the question and think to yourself, what would he think that the distance between Earth and Saturn is? Is he going to think a huge number? Does he generally tend to go overboard on these things? Does he overestimate? Does he underestimate? And then you've got to begin making your guesses based on that. Because that's what's ultimately important. You're trying to win the game. If at the end of this, you gave the right answer down to the mile, but the person asking the question had this particular answer, you still lose even though you can say to yourself and maybe feel good about the fact that you've got the right answer per what Wikipedia would tell you or the internet would tell you. But you see, that's not the point. So how does this have validity for us as we compete? Here's the answer. We've got to understand the things around us to be able to figure out how things may play out. And that's vastly important. When we're talking about our competitors, when we're in a competition where we are responsible for competing against others, we've got to be aware of what's going on. We've got to be aware of who those competitors are, how they might be feeling, what they may be thinking, so that we can figure out a mode and a plan of attack and we can figure out how to respond and react to certain things or not respond and react to certain things. But we've got to be aware of that. And that's important for us to do. So how do we do that? Well, one rational thought would be learn your competitors. Learn the folks who you're going to be competing against. Know who they are. Know what their tendencies are. Right? Know the course if you're if you're racing on a particular course or you're you're playing in a particular venue. Know all of these things. Knowledge is power. And I would say to that that that's probably a good thing to do. Don't go in blind to these things. Have some preconceived notions. However, I'm gonna provide this example. It was another example given where they played lot and thinks. And the person asking the question, one of his better friends was one of the guys that was trying to uh, guess the answer. So the guy trying to guess was like, I know this guy. He's my friend. So I'm likely going to get the right answer. I'm going to beat the other guy that I'm competing against because I know this guy. And the question was, you know, how much money would it take uh, for you to never wear socks again? Right. And so they go back and forth, these two guys. And it turns out that the friend lost. He actually lost. The other guy won. And so afterwards, he says, 
I know you. You always go to the gym. You work out all the time. Like you would allow that little bit of money to keep you from wearing socks forever. And then the guy that asked the question goes, man, you know what? You're right. Like I, yeah, I probably should have asked for more, for more money. But there you have it. So at the same time that us having knowledge and knowing some things, it maybe won't get the job done. So now I've probably confused you some more. Now you're like, oh my gosh, what am I supposed to do then? You tell me to have knowledge, but then over here you're telling me not to have knowledge. Present moment, ladies and gentlemen. It's what I say over and over to us, isn't it? If we can stay in the present moment, so we have some knowledge, but how does that knowledge line up with what we currently have in front of us? Because things are different. They're not exactly the same. No matter how many variables we can control, there's going to be something that's going to be a little bit different. So having that knowledge is a good starting point, but then also understanding the intricacies of the present moment and where we find ourselves to be able to make some of these decisions. It's a slippery slope and it's difficult to kind of put together and to get right, but it can be done. And the present moment is going to be the only way that we're going to have a fighting chance against this. This is what makes competition so difficult, right? This is what, make com what makes competition interesting at the end of all of this is the fact that we may think we know and then we don't know. Or our competitors may think they know and then they don't know. So I would just encourage us, just think about that. Just think about the fact that it's not necessarily about having the right answer. It's not necessarily about knowing probabilities, about knowing some of these things. It's about being able to stay in the present moment, being able to read our competitors, read the situation, read the course, read all of these things properly on that particular day to be able to come out with a game plan and to be able to perform in a way that is going to allow us to be successful. That's what I've got for you guys for today. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope that you guys are enjoying the content on this channel. I really kind of bring this to you guys to kind of hopefully get you thinking in a different way, get you analyzing and processing information in a different way so that you can perform at a level that I know that you're capable of, but more importantly, that you know that you are capable of. So if you're interested in learning some more about what I do and what I can do for you and how I can serve you, I would love to have a conversation with you. 30 minute consultation, completely free of charge. Just go onto the website, utmostperformance.info and get signed up for that. And I would love to do that for you. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Until next time.